Hi, I'm Em. I'm a Year 9 student at Ripley St Thomas High School in the UK. I wanted to be involved in the My Story project because I'm studying history at school and I thought that listening to people's first-hand experiences would be a valuable addition to my studies. I wanted to interview my granddad because he's a great guy and he always makes me laugh. Uh, but most of all because he's always telling stories about his life as a sailor. So, I thought it would be interesting to catch some of these stories on camera so that he could watch it back and listen to himself. Uh, but most of all, so that other people could listen and share his story. So, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> My name is William Gallagher. I was born on 24th of July 1926 at a little house called Nine Sharp Street in Kirkdale. We lived there for years. Yeah. And then I went on a training ship. So, how old were you when you were on the train? Twelve. Twelve. When I was little, uh, my auntie Maggie used to take me to see my uncle John, who was a boatswain on the Montrose. And we used to go to his cabin. And uh, when, when he used to dock, we used to go down to meet him. Uh, and we used to go to his cabin. And we always had these lovely rolls with butter on. Which a lot of us didn't used to have butter those days. Bread rolls. But, yeah, but the butter, butter, this was good butter. Uh, uh, and uh, they were warm. And a cup of tea. And I thought, whoa, this is the life, this, this is brilliant. And I think that's, I think that's, and, and the smell of the ship and, all, and, the, and the, the engines and all that sort of thing. I thought, this is marvellous, this is the life for me. And so I wanted to go away to sea. And uh, then I, I pestered my mother and father, I want to go away to sea. And then... Uh, I had to go for this uh, test in the sailor's home in Canning Place. And as I say, I, I must have, either they were very desperate for people, or that I must have been dead clever, because <laughs> the next morning I was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was, I was, a, I was a civilian on the, on the Monday, and I was a sailor on the Tuesday. And the, 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 uh, we, we learned all about gunnery. And every morning we used to scrub the deck and our bare feet with, with scrub and brushes and get the, get the water out, out of the river. And uh, in the winter time your feet were almost dropping off. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very cold. But uh, yeah, we just, we just got on with it. You learnt all sorts of things on there. You learnt to, 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 to signals. You learnt how to navigate, you learnt how to, how, how, to, how to plus a course, you learnt to tie knots, splice ropes. Everything about ships, you learnt all about ships. It was a seamanship there. And the idea was that one day we would all be uh, officers of the Merchant Navy. That was, that, that was the plan. But unfortunately the war came along and, uh, and you had to go, maybe... I went away to sea. I was on. I was in convoys uh, in the merchant navy, and then after a while, I, I, I joined the royal navy. When I was, on, I went onto a ship called the Indomitable, an aircraft carrier. Oh, first of all, I went on. I went on a little ship. It was a mine layer called the Stone Chat. We used to have what you call fog watch. Where we were in the river. All the ships used to be going in that because it was, at the time the river was very, very, very busy. Yeah. yeah. We used to have a big bell, the ship's bell, you know. Yeah. And so you used to go ding, 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 eight bells every minute. Then you'd wait a, little, a minute and then you go ding, 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 right through, right through the night. Yeah. And then in the morning time, we used to, we used to have to go up the rigging and we used to have an old folks, an old, uh, Coxon, <laughs> and he used to have a big cane, and he said, "Get up that rigging, I'll, I'll skin you alive." <laughs> he used to go up the rigging, yeah, and he used to, have to go over the rigging and down the other side. Yeah, and I don't remember. I'm not quite sure whether there must have been the safety net there. There must have been. 
we used to go over the rigging every day, every day up the rigging and over the other side. And it was all good, it was all good fun really, it was all good yeah. fun really. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You did, yeah. There was one, there was once, there was once, uh, your parents were allowed to come onto the training ship. And my mother came along, my dad was working. And once the eight bows went, we'd lower a boat and we'd row over and pick whoever up, you know, and yeah. bring them to the ship. And we brought my mother over, we brought all the parents over, you know. Uh -huh. They all came around and I'd look around the ship and say everything was okie dokie. And uh, we all had an afternoon with our mothers. That was the only time, once, that my mother was at, my parents were allowed on. Yeah. If sometimes you got a weekend leave, when I say weekend, you went home Saturday afternoon, you got back Sunday Sunday afternoon. It was just 24 hours, really. Right. Certainly got certainly got Christmas and Easter, providing no one was sick. If anyone had, as I say one time, someone had German meals and we couldn't go home. <coughs> Another time, because all our hair off, because someone knits. It's a funny thing. Uh, it's a funny thing in, in, in the service's life, in service life. If you're in England, uh, and you can get home for the weekend or anything like that. You become very, very homesick, very easy, yeah. very easy. If you, if you, on a ship like I was, and you sailed away, well, you didn't forget home, but you t you knew you couldn't get home, so you didn't become homesick. Yeah. And so, the indefatigable. Try to try to teach you to to not be homesick. Yeah. You know. So, so uh, I, I mean, they did they did a good job. What kind of things did you get to eat? The food. <laughs> well, all the time I was on the indefatigable, I never ever saw a cup and saucer. We had a basin, and uh, when you when you joined, you got a basin. A big basin like that. Mm -hmm. And I think I had a blue and white one. There was red and white one. R r r r stripes around, you know. Red stripes and blue stripes. And uh, that became your basin for life <laughs> while you were on there. That's your basin. And uh, everything went in that basin. Soup. Porridge. Tea. You tea. just kept... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You washed it. You washed it. Cup of tea, but you didn't have a cup, so you had a basin of tea or so cocoa. Drink it like that. Drink it like that, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or porridge, uh, soup, you yeah, had a spoon, like that. And uh, yeah, I, I, when you had soup, you also got a piece of bread and you dipped it in the soup. And We got sent over to the Isle of Man first. To, uh, and it was a two year course, and we had to learn this in six months. It was a crash course because of the war. Uh, and uh, so you studied, 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 studied. But, but I was a bit privileged because I'd already learnt Morse code. I'd learnt semaphore, and the, and the and the uh, the fleet code. You know the the merchant navy code and all that sort of thing. I'd learnt all that, and so I, I was I was miles ahead of, of the others, really. Yeah. You know. So it was easy for you? So it was easier for me, yeah, because I'd already done it, I'd had, I'd had years doing it, I'd had all that years, I'd had a couple of years doing it. And so I just, uh, I did very well, except that I didn't want to be a signalman, I wanted to be a stoker. Uh, and uh, when it came to the badge test, I failed this test deliberately. And I put stupid answers down. Stupid answers. Really, that's, that's that was my downfall. That because I got I got put on a disciplinary charge, and they said to me nobody could be that stupid, you know, <coughs> to put those answers down. Yeah. It was just absolutely ridiculous. So they said to me, they said to me, which frightened the life out of me actually, because I was only I was only seventeen. I think I was only about seventeen then. And they said, uh, what do we normally do with people that sabotage, sabotage? 
So I said, well, we shoot them. He said, well, you, you're sabotaging the war efforts. So should we shoot you? Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. so I said, oh, I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, well, you just go back and you pass that test because you're just acting the goat, you know. Yeah. So just go back and pass it. And if you pass it, you can go on leave for 10 days. So I went back and passed it. I went on leave for 10 days. And after that, he said to me, he said, yeah. he said what, what's all this about? So I said, well, I don't want to be a signalman. I said, I want to be a stoker. So he said, why, why do you want to be a stoker? So I said, well, I was on the, when I was on the merchant navy ships, I said, the best place on that ship was the stoke hall. I said, because lovely and warm. <laughs> you know, so it was nice and warm. Dangerous, but warm. Yeah. You know? I said, and I thought, that, that's the life for me down there, really. So he said, no, he said, you'll find out that you become a signalman and you'll know everything that's going on on the ship because the signals come through you. Yeah. And he said, you'll know everything that's going on and you'll find out it's a good job, it's a real good job. So I became a signalman and it was a good job. It was a real good job, yeah. I was always uh, up on the bridge and I knew all the signals used to come through, so I used to pass the signals on to the captain, whoever it was, and uh, it was a fantastic job.